Hello again, this is Rob Wagoner, and I wanted to continue our discussion of protecting our VMware-based virtual machines with Azure Site Recovery. So I'm going to drill back into the same ASR vault we've been using, and when I drill into the service health, I like this because it gives me a lot of insight into what's going on. And when we drill into site recovery and replicated items, we can see that we have our two replicated items, and we don't have any existing recovery plans yet. So let's create one. So I can come in here and create a recovery plan. A recovery plan is our runbook automation so that we can start our environment the way it needs to be started. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is name it. Our source is going to be the VMware server. Our target is going to be Azure. And then we'll use the resource manager items because that's where we've deployed our items. Now we need to select what items are going to fail over in this recovery plan. Now, take note that we can grab the whole replication group. We can't grab individual items though. Because we asked that these replication group, we're gonna fail the replication group over together. Like okay here, then okay here, and we'll go ahead and create that recovery plan. So now the recovery plan has been created and we can take a look at it. So we right click on it, we can customize our failover plan. The first thing we're gonna do is customize it, then we can do our test failover. So drill into customize, and what you're going to see is it created one group, with both virtual machines in it. So the reality is if we're gonna do a failover, we're gonna want our domain controller to start before our SQL server. So what we could do is create a new group, then we can move our SQL server into the new group. So this says start the domain controller first, once the domain controller is up, then start our SQL server. So we'll go ahead and save that. If you had a more complex plan, like we're also protecting our SharePoint server, we could create a third group and start SharePoint there. We can have multiple virtual machines per group, but this way we can start them in order like we need them started. So now that's saved, we can close this and we can actually now go over and perform a test failover. So a test failover is going to fail these virtual machines into a sandbox. It's going to leave your on-premises virtual machines running, so you're not going to take any outage for this. So we want to make sure that we put this on a non-production network, which was why I created TS2 Test. This way, we can focus it in this sandbox network, bring both virtual machines up and make sure they're there. Go ahead and click OK, and now the test failover is in progress. Of course, we can always drill in and watch this occur. What I'm going to do is leave you now and come back once this is finished. Okay, so now I've come back to you after the test failover has made some progress and as you can see here's the test failover job and you can even see the timing so it took a while to get the virtual machines deployed but then startup was relatively quick and this one started up first in group one and then when it was done group two started so again that way we can stage our virtual machines now it's telling us user input required if we move over to virtual machines we can now see these two virtual machines that have been deployed. By default, these virtual machines are not visible to the outside world. You can't just remote desktop to them. If they've test failed over into one of your test networks where you have another virtual machine you can RDP into, then you can ping it that way. What I'm going to do is walk through setting up this virtual machine so that I can remote desktop to it from outside. In the blog, one of the things you have to be aware of is setting up your firewall rules to allow this remote desktop in because this new network will probably look like a public network, not your domain network. So be sure your firewall rules are set to pay attention to that. Again, I added that detail in the blog itself. So we're going to go into network interfaces. We have to expose this virtual machine to the outside world. Here's our virtual machine. And as you see, we have this private IP address, but no public IP address, so we can't RDP to it. And that's what we're going to add here. So we go in and add IP addresses, enable a public IP, and then we have to go configure the settings. Now, because I've tested this before, I already have a virtual machine IP address set up for it that I can reuse. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse that. If you don't have one, just click Create, and it'll create one for you. But I click Save here, and it'll save the interface. So we'll let that run a minute, and I'll come back when it's complete, and I'll show you connecting to that VM. Okay, so now the job is saved, so we can go back and actually take a look at this virtual machine. We can scroll all the way back like this, or just re-click on VMs. Okay, so now that the virtual machine is up and running, I want to show you something. When I right click on SQL test, notice that connect is great because I have not added the external network like we did for DC test. So on DC test, connect shows up. 
And so we'll go ahead and say open this virtual machine and connect. And then of course it asks for credentials. So we'll go ahead and log in. Now it gives me the name of the VM that I'm going to connect to. We'll go ahead and remote into it. Notice the public IP, that's one of the Microsoft IP addresses. So now we're connected into the virtual machine. And what I want to do is go in and show you again this public IP address. And you'll see that this resolves to cloudapp.net, which is Azure. Now this is the domain controller. And when we flip over to local server, you'll see the name. And this is in the sandbox. So vmw-dc1, and it still shows that it's in the domain. But when I flip over to my VMware server, you'll see that this VM is still running on premises as well. So it's showing as powered on. My point is, is because we're failing over into a sandbox and these are hyphenated with tests, we can bring these VMs up and prove that replication work and that they're replicating into the Azure sandbox. The other thing I want to show you is remember, we couldn't connect directly to the SQL VM, but if I say ping, the virtual machine, there it is showing up on 10.189.0.5. Moving back over here, so when I drill into SQL test, we can scroll down to network interface, and we'll see that it's at 10.189.0.5, which is what we pinged. This is showing that we can bring both virtual machines up and running. They're both in the same subnet. So if you have some complex infrastructure, you can bring up copies of those in the sandbox, make sure they're all communicating and working well together. That's all I wanted to show you here. Now, how do we clean this up? The cool part is when we flip back over here to recovery services, into our vault, we get this nice little monitoring page, site recovery health and what's going on. If we drill down in here, it shows us we have one site recovery plan waiting for input. Drill into it, and it shows our test failover plan currently running, user input required. So we can review this, and again, we'll see that in about 20 minutes, it brought these virtual machines up, and so I had this test failover in 22 minutes. Once we're done, we can complete test and add notes. So these notes are great because you can go back and review these. We then check the box to say test failover is complete, clean up the environment. And this will go ahead and delete these virtual machines, remove them and everything. So say OK. We've recorded our notes and it's starting the task to clean this up. So this is what I wanted to touch on today. And the next time we talk, I'll show you the full failover. So again, thank you for joining me and I wish you well.